All right, we're here with head football coach Jerry Mack uh, after a 24-17 win against Gardner-Webb. Can you talk about that victory for us? Very proud of the way the guys came out and performed. You know, sometimes it's tough when you play a, a non-conference game in the middle of the season to just kind of get motivated. But our guys showed they had some maturity and they came out and they performed well on the offensive side of the ball. I thought we grew a lot in the passing game, especially Chauncey Caldwell and our wide receiver core. And then on defense, you know, those guys did a really good job of, of containing that quarterback who's one of the premier quarterbacks in all of college football. So for us to come together as a unit and as a team to go out there and show that kind of maturity and show that kind of uh, you know, kind of coming together as far as on offense and defense, it really proved that we're getting better each week. Coach, beginning of the season, or preseason, we talked about depth of the team is one of those things you wanted to kind of look into as you were kind of one of your concerns. Um, you were a little banged up last couple of weeks, but some guys stepped into some roles and, and kind of filled a void. How do you like the depth now as you kind of halfway through the season? Uh, I like I like what we're doing. You know, we're playing a lot of different guys, especially on the defense side of the ball. A lot of guys are, are stepping up and they're sh coming to play every single week. I think last week against Howard, I think Roger Harris had one of his best games of his career. You saw this past week, we played a lot of different guys. You know, we're in that middle of the season where we're battling a lot of bumps and bruises and things like that. So we have to decrease some guys' reps. And you see some guys stepping into a different role week to week. And that's only going to help us as we get ready for this late October and November stretch. Is everybody pretty uh, healed up now? Is still some guys who who might miss a couple games? I think it, it's always going to be some guys that miss some games here or there, or miss some reps, or their reps have to decrease from week to week. And uh, I, don't, I don't think you know you're that part of the season where you're always going to be kind of banged up. But that is kind of college football in, in this day and age. The team that can overcome those injuries and those guys that can develop and step up, those are the teams that's going to have a chance to win championships at the end of the year. I know you had the early bye week, and uh, but are you guys? Because you got so many guys who got some reps early in the season, are you kind of ready to make that run because you're deeper at some positions? We are. You know, I think our guys are, are, are focused and they understand what's at stake going forward here these last five games. We're going to take it one game at a time. And, and they understand that some guys' the roles will have to change as we continue to go forward. Some guys that have been predominantly special teams players for us. They're going to have to kind of get plays on offense and defense. And that's going to be key to, to you know, as we kind of make this, this long season run. So I imagine since the depth is showing that the uh, the competition and the battles in preseason camp, they went like you wanted them to go. They did. You know, you see those guys that we thought were going to have a chance to step up and, and be good players for us. You can see those guys because of the work that they put in, not only in the, in the preseason camp, but also they were a lot of those guys were here in the summertime. And now you can kind of see that all kind of coming together right now. Those guys have some game experience under their belt. They have some confidence. So we're not trying to reinvent the wheel as we get into games six and seven of the year. How big is it you can have those guys who, like a Nail or somebody like Ramon behind behind Isaiah or De Niro who's here with us today, just guys who can you just fill in and not really lose a beat. That, that's key. You know, right now in college football to me, that's where the games are won and lost. It's how much depth and how much how many guys you feel comfortable with being able to play. We're gonna always play a lot more guys probably on the defense side of the ball than the offense side of the ball just because of the the sheer nature of the beast as far as the defense side of the ball and the way we play. We're a physical style of football team. So we're gonna have guys always with bumps and bu bumps and bruises and things like that. And when you got guys like Denario and when you got guys like some of the guys like uh King Kiaki or or uh, Anthony Sherrill, people like that that are able to come in and spell some really good players and they start to make a name for themselves their own, their, in their own right, uh, that's going to be key. Five game win streak, um, how much confidence can you feel from your team in practice and just seeing them every day? It's getting better week to week. You know, I think the more we get into the stretch, we've always been a team that has gotten better down the stretch. Every year it seems like we get stronger as the season goes. And I think that's a really good compliment to our strength conditioning coach, Coach Lee. Our training staff does a really good job of trying to make sure they get those guys in there to get them treatment and things like that. And our guys focus. We, we just get stronger as the year goes on. You know, when we start off in week one, we are not the same team when we come week 11. And that has really been our key to our success. I mean, I'd imagine, especially like you were telling us how physical the game is for you guys, mm -hmm. I'd imagine it's easy to kind of get worn down and 
go the other way, kind of fade away towards the end of the season. How do you keep them focused and, and prevent that from happening? You get into a point where you kind of see the rainbow at the end of the tunnel. And what I mean by that is, you know, we're getting to that five-game stretch. A lot of these guys understand the importance of every conference game. They understand that, hey, we're, um, you know, we're five and one. We're pretty much undefeated in the conference. So we have just as good of a chance to control it. We still control our own destiny. So everything that we work for the entire year, we talk about national championships, we talk about celebration, but we talk about all those different things and now as we get closer and closer you can kind of see those things all kind of come together and they are become more and more of a reality each and every week so i know some coaches they don't use the c word they don't talk about championship until it's right there but you're mm -hmm. not afraid of that you let them know you remind them of their goals all the time we do all the time at halftime uh, and before the game, all that. We want to keep it eyes on the prize, and that's what we're working for. So when you get tired or when you get down or when the game's on the line, just remember what we're playing for. And it, hopefully that gives you that extra motivation and an extra boost to go out there and, and be successful. You guys have always had battles with, with Norfolk State, and you know, a and is a rival, but it's, the Norfolk State games are always very tight, and you can never tell what's going to go. What is it about them that always give you guys problems and make it go down to the wire, or is it just you guys' style of play? Because it's been all, how most of your games have been this year. Well, you know, hopefully it doesn't be like that on Saturday. But you just never know. You know, one thing is no folks have done a really good job. Coach Scott has done a great job of, of putting together a great staff. And then you, you look at their team, they're built very similar to us. They have a lot of young guys and some key roles uh, trying to be successful and going out there. And they're playing a lot of young guys on both sides of the ball. And in the past, it's just been one of those types of games that we were up last year. We kind of got a little bit lax. And, you know, they came back on us and they made it a dog fight right there at the end the year before, very, very similar. You know, so I think you t you got two styles of teams that are very very similar. Uh, Norfolk are, is two and four. You can't look at their record because they could have easily come out on the opposite end of a couple of those games. They probably had a chance at the end of the game last week to beat uh, Hampton University. So they could easily well be in a whole different different um, different area than they are now. Just like you guys they have a freshman uh, quarterback. This Tell me a little bit about what you've seen from him on film so far. I think he's the feature of that program. Uh, he's a guy that's athletic. He can move around. Uh, he's had almost a 300-yard passing game a couple of weeks ago. Uh, he's throwing the ball extremely well. You can kind of see it all come together. He's very similar to Chauncey when I say that. You can see him getting better and better each and every week. And I think that's one of the keys to that, that quarterback position uh, in the MEAC conference now. When you're playing that young quarterback, you, you really just focus on him making some growth every week. He's a local guy. So is, he, is that the guy from East Wake or somewhere in the area? Yeah, he's he's yeah he's from he's kind of from this area or from North Carolina, so to speak. Um, obviously, have your linebacker here today, one of your many guys who transferred into the program but who have contributed um, on the field. Here, Let's talk about some of those guys and their big impact. You can start with De Niro here. Their impact they've made on the program in such a short time. Huge. You know, when you talk about having depth, when you talk about guys that you can plug in and not miss a beat, you know, Reggie Hunter's been a really good staple for us at linebacker and Tank has been doing a really good job. But I think De Niro is one of those guys that's kind of under the radar because what he does, not only on the defense side of the ball, but also on special teams is really huge. Really proud of the way he came up with a fumble recovery last week. And I think, you know, as he's been in our system, he's just got better and better. And he's a guy that in a short amount of time, so there's no telling what he could have probably been if he had been with us the last three or four years. Years. But in a short amount of time, he's been able to come in and learn our system and, more importantly, adapt to our culture and our style of play. And the guys have accepted him. The coaches love to work with him. And that's going. And he's been a, a big surprise. And he's been a really big help for us this, this past year. He's a guy, you know, you have Tank, you have Reggie, but you could bring in a guy off the bench who's right there with them again. Yeah. It, it speaks to your depth. It does. And the thing is, you know, when you look at the end of the season and when you look at the end of the game, those guys are receiving very similar reps. They all got about 30 or 40 snaps on the defense side of the ball or total plays in the game. So, you know, we don't really look at them as starters or backups or anything like that because all of them are playing about the equal amount, amount of snaps. And when the game is on the line, we have just as much confidence in Denario as we do any other linebacker that we put on that field. Speaking of confidence, game on the line, these guys who've played some, some reps as backups, can you, have you seen their confidence grow from the Duke game to now just as the season goes along? Huge. Uh, these guys, they constantly get reps. We constantly work them in throughout the course of the game. They're in the meetings. They're, they're in, uh, on the practice field. They continue to gain more and more confidence, and that's what you want with a young team. You want every week those guys to be able to understand that their work that they're putting in and the preparation they're putting in throughout the week is not going in vain, and they have been able to help us be successful these last few weeks.
is the competition level on the practice field still as high as it is now as it was back in August when you guys first started camp? It is. It's just different uh, because now we're getting to more of uh, we're trying to implement the game plan and we kind of understand what different guys' strengths and maybe even what guys' weaknesses are. So I think the depth chart or, or you know, as far as playing time is kind of set and it's just a matter of who's healthy that week, uh, who who better fits whatever personnel we're going up, up against that week. Some guys are better at man coverage. Some guys are better at, at reading different things than others. So every week it could be a different starter or there are some people's roles could be increased depending on what kind of plan is going to going in that week. Um, and we talked about Chauncey after the game. Obviously, you hadn't seen the film yet, but after you watching the film, were you even more impressed uh, than you were after we talked the game on Saturday? I was extremely impressed because he did everything that we talked about the previous week. He took it into the game and he he executed the game plan like we wanted him to. We had a certain certain things we were looking for from the quarterback position. We wanted to see him grow in some areas, and I think he did all of that and, and more. To be honest with you, and if he continues just to get better and and just. You know, go within the game plan and play within the plan, I think he can be a really good quarterback here. He said after the game, um, physically, he felt great, a lot better because he didn't run as much. Mm -hmm. uh, so moving forward, you can try to make sure he tries to stay in the pocket and, and less design runs for him. Well, I think it's just whatever the the defense presents that week. Uh, this was a, that last game, Gardner Webb was an opponent that we knew he was going to have to sit back in the pocket and throw the ball. Uh, running the quarterback is always going to be a part of our model because that's what we do. And I think he, you know that was just one of those plans where he did not have to run as much this week. I can't say. It may be a, a difference. The next week it may be different as well. So it's just whatever the defense presents itself that week. Can you talk about De Niro's skill set and, and his strengths as a linebacker or just as a player overall? You know, you have some guys that you, you put into the game and you want them to make a splash or you're trying to set the tempo. Uh, one of the things that jumps out at you about De Niro, it was in the offseason and it's been throughout the course of the season, he's a very violent hitter. You know, he, he understands how to use his pads and play with pad level. He understands how to do the right thing within the rules as well. And, you know, the way he hits, the way he strikes, uh, he sets the tone, he sets the tempo for what we want as a defense. We always talk about being able to hit anything that moves, and I think he's, he exemplifies that in his style of play. I could be wrong. Um, I'll ask him as well. Was that, that fumble recovery, was that his first play in, in the game? I don't know exactly. You probably have to ask him that. I'm not quite quite sure. But just to come off and bring an instant immediate impact like that, that's big for, like I say, one of your reserves. How big is that? That's huge. And that's kind of what we talk about. Whenever you get a chance to uh, get in the game and make an impact, the 11 players that we put in, offense, defense, special teams, they all have the same amount of opportunity to make an impact in that particular play or that when they're in the game. And he took advantage of his opportunity. We're here with De Niro Laster, a senior linebacker. Just uh, talk us through the, the last game. How did you feel the defense performed against Gardner-Webb? Uh, I feel like we performed really well. You know, uh, us as defensive players, we just try to take our game plan that the coach presents us uh, throughout the week and execute it uh, when time for game. So I feel like each week we're improving, we're getting better as a defense, and hopefully we can just keep it up. You guys have played a lot of close games this year, and, and a lot of it has been on the shoulders of the defense to get stops late. Talk about that, and, and do you guys seem to thrive on that? Well, uh, we understand that we have a young team or a young offense uh, as well, but uh, we believe uh, every ounce in them every game that they're going to come out and do their job. So as a defense, we we know that's one of our strengths as our team. So we just uh, we know we have to carry our team a little bit. So every week, you know, we just continue to step up, and we've been growing together as a team with these close games. Okay, so like we already asked, that that was your first play on the field. You caused a fumble. Just talk about being able to kind of wait and, and just bring that energy on, on your very first snap. Uh, well, yes, sir. I'm a, a true believer. And patience is a virtue. Uh, coach always talks about uh, when you get your opportunity to uh, just make sure you take a full advantage of it and be ready for it. So uh, that first that first play with that fumble recovery, you know, it just went back to coach uh, always telling me to be ready and be and stay prepared and everything. And uh, it's, it's also quite funny because uh, I wore this gold mouthpiece. The uh, last time I wore the mouthpiece, the first play I got in, I got a fumble recovery against Alabama. So. Uh, seems like I'll be wearing that mouthpiece every game from here on out. In that play against Alabama, did you start or you came off? I came off uh, the bench as a reserve. How do you preserve a mouthpiece from, from one year to the next? Uh, well, those the mouthpiece was one of those things. Uh, my, that was my last football game. 
prior to this year uh, when I got injured. So I always just wanted to keep it. And I didn't know if I wanted to wear it again because I got injured or because I had a pretty good game. So, uh, yeah, basically that's why I kept it. Where'd you keep it for the, I guess, a year and some change? Uh, I kept it in a bag. I, I keep all my, my football accessories and socks. and Yeah, so it's been, a, it's been all over the place. What made you break it out this game? You just saw it and like, throw it in? I just saw it and, and I wanted to take a risk. Like I said, I had got injured uh, the last time prior to wearing that mouthpiece, so I was a little bit nervous about wearing it again, but uh, I thought it would be good, so I'm glad I wore it. You keep the mouthpiece in the bag with your socks? Yeah, with my socks and gloves and Under Armour. Yeah, I know. <laughs> good luck. Yep. Just about, okay. yep. <laughs> Before you play this game, you just wash, rinse it off. I just rinsed it off and put it right in. <laughs> so lucky gold yes, sir. Yes, sir. Was that, was that a school issue? I, I imagine it wasn't school issue. No, uh, uh, Dick Sporting Goods. It was not school issue, but uh, I will. I will say I enjoy wearing my mouthpiece on Saturday. So we'll be seeing it again this Saturday. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It'll be out there again. Your, Coach Matt kind of talked about this too. You, you Reggie, uh, Tank. You guys get get similar reps. Um, when you look at the end of the game. So does it matter to either of you guys who starts or who goes out there first, or does it, you all just feel like the same level? To us, uh, it doesn't matter about who starts. I mean, uh, speaking for myself, I feel like uh, since I've been here, uh, uh, there's been a lot of competition in the linebacker room. And uh, from practice, uh, I just wanted to show like guys uh, how we can compete all the time and make each other better. So uh, me taking – and Reggie, we always have this 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 uh this competitive nature, whether it's in practice or 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 during the game. But we're all brothers. We all we all know we want to help the team, whether it's me and Reggie or Tank and Reggie. Uh, so we all just just play for one another when we're not in, and we all just play together as as one whole linebacker core. And you're on special teams. Though. Yes, sir. Oh, well, I, I've always uh, been a kickoff guy. I like special teams. Uh, I understand that at the next level, everybody uh, has to play special teams if you don't start or you're not the superstar of the team. So uh, special teams, I, I was one of those guys, older guys, that wanted to implement and show uh, my teammates how special I mean or how important special teams is uh, when we're playing in a game. So I love special teams. Coach Mack talked about your uh, your hitting and, and being a valid hitter. Where does that come from? Uh, it might come from my uh, rough upbringing and where I started playing football at. Uh, just was always taught to be violent and, and get and hit as hard as I can with everything. So uh, growing up, you have to still learn how to how to uh, play technique wise within using your uh, physical nature. But yeah, I love hitting. You mentioned you, uh, rough upbringing. Where are you from? Uh, Cleveland, Ohio. Oh, when did you start playing football? What do you kind of remember about starting to love this sport when you were still young in Cleveland? Well, I started playing football when I was about nine years old. Uh, I was pretty much a mama's boy, and my father was incarcerated. So uh, the first year he got out, he uh, took me down to inner city in the Muni League, a pretty bad community. Uh, I seen a lot of things growing up, and it was pretty rough. So uh, just that whole, that nature kind of stuck with me. My, my Muni League football coach, he just taught me about the game of football. And uh, ever since then, I've, I've had a passion and love for the game. So uh, I've just carried that with me throughout all my years of playing football and never forgetting where I came from. So you look back on those, those are fond memories, even though they're tough moments. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, like I said, I just, I, I'm blessed to, to be where I'm at right now. Uh, a lot of people who I've came up with and played football with, uh, they were fortunate enough to continue playing football, and I am. So uh, I kind of look back at it as a blessing and just being lucky and happy to still be playing football. When you got here, you think some of the guys were uh, maybe shocked or it was an eye-opener about how physical you were, how, your, your physical style to approach to practice and things like that? Uh, yeah, a lot of guys ask me a lot of questions, still to this day sometimes, just about the, the difference between uh, big-time D1 football and, and here at Central. But uh, every school I've always been at, I always have gotten that I was very physical, and coaches love my, my physical nature and, and my toughness that I bring. So I, I kind of wanted to bring that here to this team too, you know, uh, coming in as a new guy. 
you want to you want to impress your coaches and your teammates, but at the same time, you want to also let them know that that you're one of them, you're part of them. Now we're all family, so uh, I just try to implement that coming in. You remember a certain moment from an early practice or maybe a workout you you felt like you had impressed everybody with your style of play? Oh, well, there was a one on one. Uh, we were doing one on one drills, and I was rushing, pass rushing, and. Uh, Sorry, Dale, but uh, I had, I had pretty much ran over Dale, and uh, it it felt pretty good, and everybody was pretty excited for me and everything. So I felt like uh, that was the first moment where I got to show uh, a bit of my toughness and my phys physicality. You play in Minnesota and Kentucky. Yes, so sir. Big Ten, SEC. Yes, sir. Being physical wasn't an issue for you at all. No, sir. No, sir. It's always been a strength to my game and everything. So uh, I plan to just uh, – Going forward, just continue to work on my weaknesses. You know, I, I do understand I have uh, weaknesses, and that's that's a big part for me to just continue to get better every week and uh, identify those weaknesses and try to get better. When you got here, how did you let the guys know? Like you said, you want to let them know that you're one of the guys as well, but how did you kind of fall in and kind of get, get close with the guys? Well, uh, I think a lot of bonding out there on the field. Uh, a lot of guys respect you as a football player, especially when you're able to impress and everything. Uh, I know coming from a big school, I didn't want to be one of those guys who people thought were uh, cocky or, or stuck up or too good. Uh, I know at this level, we, I have a lot of uh, teammates and everything. We all come from poverty. And just uh, about a year or two ago, I had my house burned at home, burned down back at home where I'm from. So uh, just little situations like that, you know, uh, people might have thought of me before just being the, the too good guy or whatever, but everybody goes through through situations and, and problems. So uh, that just being a, an example, uh, some guys knowing about that, just just let them know that I'm still one of them. I'm just like them. Has everybody recovered from from the incident with your home burning down? Uh, yeah, right now everybody has recovered. Uh, uh, I thank the Lord that uh, that we have a home and, and that we're not homeless and, and everything. So. That's a blessing. I imagine that's not something you opened up to about a lot of guys, but you said some guys knew about it. How, how did they find out about it? Uh, just some guys who reached out to me uh, and just wanted to know more about me and where I come from and, and me just sharing those those experiences with those. So a lot of people still don't know, but uh, some people on our team do. How did you, end, I'm just you end up at Central? What made Central want to be your next stop? Well, uh, I had an older brother who played here by the name of Donald Laster. He played here about 10 years ago. And uh, I just have, I have a love for this school, even though this is my first year here. I grew up coming to his games, watching Central play. And so I know a little bit of the history behind this. And, and I, uh, I, I had a pride to come here and play after my brother. He, he's a pretty good player here, did some uh, great things here. So that was a big part of me just continue to uh, continue on with my brother's legacy, playing football at the school he went to. And uh, just having that different experience of playing at HBCU football, uh, a lot of people ask me to this day, uh, like, which, which is, what is better, playing in the SEC, the Big Ten, or uh, black college football? And uh, honestly, to me, I, I enjoy playing here. A lot, a lot more than the other schools. I mean, playing in front of 100,000 fans, I mean, it's it's pretty, it's pretty nice and it's a blessing. But like playing here at this HBCU school, I mean, I feel like I feel you feel the more more love and everything the togetherness at the school, and you feel the school pride, and and so I, I really enjoy that. Do you feel like it's funny you said coming from a SEC school? Um, a lot of fans just know you as a football player as opposed to coming here where fans or students actually get to know you better as a person because it's a little bit smaller community. Yes, sir. Uh, I agree with that. Uh, uh, we often uh, always get looked up as just being the football player, the neurological football player. And here at Central, uh, like everybody's so, so close and everybody knows everybody. And uh, it's just so much school pride that everybody, everybody takes pride in our school pride and uh, it's just so much love here, and I couldn't ask to be anywhere else, really. You still watch a lot of SEC football in your free time? Yes, sir. I still watch a lot of SEC football and Big Ten football. Your brother Donald was a hard-hitting linebacker, too. Do you kind of credit any of your physicalness to uh, to him being a little rough on you as well? Yes, sir. I definitely uh, credit a lot of a lot of my my uh, my game to him. 
Uh, like I was saying, when I was younger, my father was incarcerated, so my older brother, he was uh, pretty pretty much like the, the, male, the male figure in our family and in the house. And he just taught me a lot about being a man and just we were dealing with football, teaching me how to play football, teaching me how to tackle, teaching me how to get off blocks and everything. So uh, just all that playing into part of uh, a reason why I wanted to come here and do my last year of football here in North Carolina Central. Does he get a chance to see you play? And if so, what type of feedback has he given you? Uh, well, my brother, yeah, he, he gets a chance to see me play almost every Saturday, whether he's here or he's at work listening to it on the, the live stream or whatever. But he's pretty hard on me. You know, uh, he grades me out pretty hard. But uh, it's nothing but tough love. He just wants me to, to be better than what he was here. So that's, all, that's how I take it. And what are your aspirations after uh, college football? and NCCU ends for you? Uh, well, my aspirations, you know, everybody, uh, I think, has dreams or goals of playing football at the next level professionally. And uh, if, 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 if I'm given the opportunity, I would love to continue to play football. But uh, I have a business, a degree in business, and uh, my my family, we are huge on have a huge construction business back at home. So uh, if football doesn't work, I plan on going back home and and implementing construction into my, my neighborhood and, and continue with my family, our family business in construction. You already have a degree? Yes, sir. That's amazing. Uh, so you're in grad school right now? Yes, sir, I'm in grad school. Um, what's your grad degree going to be in? Uh, sports recreation is, is with the uh, grad degree that I'm focusing on right now. So uh, I hope to continue to, to go to school and continue with, with school. Because, like I said, we, I feel like we, uh, as football players, often get caught up as the, the athlete or just the football player. And sometimes we forget that uh, football can lead us to other opportunities besides just, just football. So education is, is big for me. So I, I, it's always good to get your education. And I encourage all my teammates all the time to continue to work hard and get their degree. Because after football is done, uh, that's all you have to, to, to lean back on. Is your brother uh, in the family business, the construction business? Or? Yeah, well, he, he he's trying to work his way into there. He uh, he's right now he's just working down here, uh, taking care of his family and, and trying to still get settled in as a as a full grown parent and dad right now. But yeah, he's uh, he he's he's with the construction business. Is your brother the guy see you before games or right before you go to tunnel? You walk through yes. the yes, sir. A yes, sir. He's a little shorter than me. <laughs> This has been an exclusive presentation of the NCCU Sports Network.